But you know, this morning, you know, because we are a new church, and a lot of you guys know that, we're going through the fundamental doctrines. And you know, this morning I actually planned on preaching on the doctrine of baptism. Because I thought, you know, baptism, it lines up with the death, burial, and resurrection. That's what it represents. But one of the things I wanted to touch on in the sermon I was preparing uh, about baptism was why we didn't keep Baptists in our church name. Because a lot of people wonder, you know, why did you call it the church in Punchbowl? Why didn't you call it Punchbowl Baptist Church or such and such Bible word Baptist Church? And as I started to like reason through it in my notes, it became its own sermon. So I'm just going to preach on that this morning. And I thought it might be an interesting topic for you at least. It's related to baptism, um, but maybe I'll preach on either baptism next week um, as we go through the doctrines. But, you know, that really is a question that, you know, maybe we don't get asked because I mean, maybe it's something that is controversial amongst our circle. Um, but maybe a lot of you are wondering, you know, why, why did Victor decide to call this church the Church in Punchbowl? Why didn't he continue, uh, you know, calling it a Baptist church? Why, why did he take Baptist out of the church name? And I want to just explain to you my reasoning behind that this morning. And um, hopefully you can see why I believe it's the most biblical name that uh, we could have. So what is the reasoning behind our church name? Um, or more specifically, you know, why didn't I keep Baptist as part of, the, uh, part of the church name? Well, if you think of the reasons why people keep Baptist in the church name, you can pretty, pretty much sum it up uh, by three reasons. And I'm going to go through the, those three reasons this morning. And what I want to show you is, you know, these three reasons that people uh, base their decision on to keep Baptist in the church name are aren't even good reasons to make any decision in your life, let alone, the let alone the name of your church. And what are these three reasons? Well, let's go through them. The number one reason why people want to keep Baptists in their church name is because of association, isn't it? Um, because they, it's, the, it's the, the association that people um, give to that name. Um, the association the name has to, to most people. Basically, what people think about that name. Isn't that what association is? It's basically what people think of your name and the impression that it gives uh, when you say that name to people. And somebody might say, well, you know, doesn't it, help, doesn't it help people to get an idea of what you believe if you call yourself a Baptist church? Well, you know, I think you can argue for that or against that because people will say, well, don't you want to give at least people a, a ballpark idea of what you believe when they hear your name but you know my question is you know what does baptist even mean these days because if it's if it's dependent on what people think or the impression that people get when they hear the name baptist you know what does it even mean doesn't it depend then on where you live you know your culture what you've grown up to 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 learn what baptist means and and your association with baptist and baptists that you know so it's really a, a relative term, isn't it? I mean, most people that I speak to, when I, when I go out soul winning and I just speak to people, and when, when we used to go to Lighthouse Baptist Church and say we were from a Baptist church, what, what was their first impression? When I spoke to people, the first impression was that it was a denomination, that it was a Protestant denomination, and we were part of the Protestant line of churches, and, and as soon as you said to them, we were from a Baptist church, oh, you're part of the Baptist denomination. So this idea of naming your church based on association, will that give people an idea of what you believe? Does it? Because it depends on what they believe about Baptists is, is going to change what impression it gives them. And you know, that was one of, one of the, uh, th this is not the reason why I went with the church in Punchbowl, but you know, that was one of the reasons why I sort of swayed away from it. Because I wanted a, a church name where when I said to somebody, you know, we're from the church in Punchbowl, it sounded independent. It didn't sound like we were part of a denomination or part of a religious organization or part of some Baptist convention or uh, anything like that. I wanted a name where it was clear we are not part of any organization. We are uh, independent. And you know, that's, that's what people think when they hear the church in Punchbowl, right? Because when you go out soul winning, you tell them, 
you're from the church in Punchbowl, they ask you, what denomination are you a part of? So that just proves to me that when they hear that name, they think it's independent because they don't realize what denomination we're part of. And then we can explain to them, we can educate them and say, you know, we're not part of a denomination. We're an independent church. We govern ourselves. You know, we don't answer to any uh, board um, in another place. And, um, you know, that's what I like about it. That's one, one thing I like about it. And, you know, we're not hiding our denomination like some other churches are like Assemblies of God churches, because they are part of a denomination and they, they want a name that sounds independent, but they're not actually independent because they are actually part of a denomination. So we don't have that problem. Because we are independent, it's fine for our name to sound independent. You know, um, a neighbour just, just around the corner, uh, he, he uh, got one of our tracks and he um, uh, sent me an email and he asked the question, you know, I'm, a, I'm Assemblies of God, what denomination are you? So that just goes to show that we, you know, our name sounds independent. And, you know, I had to, I had to explain to him, you know, we're not part of a denomination, you know, because he kept trying to push me saying like, what denomination are you a part of? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dodging your question. We're not part of a denomination. We're, we're independent. <laughs> and it, it, it's almost like he couldn't get it out of his head that every church must be part of a, a part of a denomination. And then when he found out, we were sent out from Lighthouse Baptist Church. Ah, that's the denomination you're a part of. You're part of the Baptist denomination. And, you know, this is why I just want to try as, as hard as possible to move away from this thought that we're part of this, this group. And even when people refer to independent Baptist churches, what does that even mean? We're independent. You know, it's, it, what, what Lighthouse does has nothing to do with what we do here. What Southland does has nothing to do with what Lighthouse does. You know, we, we all are just following the Bible as independent, uh, fundamental churches. So am I, you know, people say, well, are you trying to hide what you believe? Are you trying to, you know, mislead people and make them, uh, you know, uh, not know what you actually believe? Well, no, because if you've actually gone to our website, and probably all of you here have gone to our website, when you read our website and you go through the information, does it sound like we're trying to hide what we believe? We're not trying to hide what we believe. We're just trying to create our own identity. You know, we want to create our own identity. We want people to know what we believe and who we are based on who we actually are and who, what we actually believe, not what other people think we are and what their impression of a, of a group name is. So, you know, I'm not we're not trying to hide what we believe. You know, our website is very clear. It's got a lot of information on there about what we believe. And we put all the preaching up there. We put all the sermons up there. I even put all my sermon outlines up there. So people are clear what we believe and why we believe it. And, you know, to me, that's safer than any preconceived idea, isn't it? In my opinion, you know, for somebody to actually find out what we believe because of what we believe is safer than somebody assuming that they know what we believe based on a name that we decide to keep and we, we decide to continue. And, you know, people, people make a big deal about church names, don't they? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a big deal to some people to the point where, you know, they condemn others for not following their own conventions. But, you know, why, why is it such a big deal what your church name is? You know, is, is it a big deal what your church name is? You know, isn't, isn't it more important, you know, who you actually are, not what you're called? Isn't it more important what you're actually doing? Because, you know, we live in a day where people glorify names, Right? And they glorify qualifications. You know, they want to know, you know what qualifications you have, what title you have, you know, what, uh, what cert certifications you have. Um, you know, we, don't need, we don't need qualifications and certifications of men. You know, I'm happy just knowing that I'm doing, doing the will of God and I have God's blessing in my life. Um, so you know, I would really like you know, what we do as a church to define us and not by the name that we are known by. But, you know, being called Baptist, you know, keeping Baptist in your name, it can work in your favor, can't it? There are pros and cons. Um, you know, we've gone through some of the cons, but there are some pros as well. I mean, if people have a good association and the true, the right position of what a Baptist should believe, then, you know, they're going to think well of you. They're not going to think badly of you. So there, there can be a good association. If there's a bad association, then it doesn't work in your favor. If there's a good association, then it, then it might work in your favor. You know, some people will say, well, you know, if they're looking for a church. They might look for an independent Baptist church and they may not find you on the internet, um, which is true. You know, if you are, you know, if you 
call your church a Baptist church and if somebody's looking for a Baptist church, it might be easier for them to find you on a Google search or anything like that. The funny thing is that because I've got blog posts on our website with Lighthouse Baptist Church in it, when you type soul winning Baptist church NSW, we're on the first page of Google. So, you know, that just goes to show you don't have to have a name that's called Baptist Church to be found with the Baptist keyword. Uh, so people are finding us anyway, even though um, we're not called such and such Baptist Church. But you know, the thing is, I find today that the association with Baptist churches these days is not generally good. Well, you know, not, not that I would say not generally good, but it's, it's, it's going further and further away from what we believe. Um, in this church here. And let me just list a few for you. Um, you know, number one, lip service to the King James Bible, meaning where they, they preach and they teach that they're holding the Word of God, that you read the Word of God, that they're preaching the Word of God. And then when you ask them, is that really the Word of God? No. You have to go back to the originals. You have to go back to the Greek and Hebrew. Only the originals contain the Word of God. Um, if you want more about that topic, you can listen to my sermon, The Word of God. So they give lip service to the King James Bible. They don't actually believe that the Bible they hold in their hand is the perfect word of God. What about this repent of your sins, uh, work salvation heresy that a lot of independent Baptist churches are preaching these days? They don't just preach salvation by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. They preach that you have to turn from your sins or forsake your sins, um, turn over a new leaf, repent of your sins in order to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, for salvation, and that is nothing more than works. So do I want to be associated with work salvation? No. Well, what's another thing that people think about, uh, you know, Baptist churches these days? That they're American. That, you know, that they, that they have American traditions, American bishop, everything American about them. You know, maybe they come here and they get shocked, right? Because I'm not American and I look Chinese, I sound Australian. Uh, who knows? But, you know, American. What about, what about um, in Baptist churches, preacher worship? You know, worshipping the preacher as though he's above everyone in the congregation. Now, do I rule in the house of God? Yes. But am I more valuable than you? Do, am I more anointed than you? Am I uh, lifted above as though, I, you know, this, uh, this, the, the, the laity and the, what do they say, the layman and the clergy? No, but that happens a lot in independent Baptist churches. Raising up the preacher above everybody else as, a, as though he's the anointed prophet or king. You know, what about quote-unquote hard preaching in Baptist churches where, you know, I believe in hard preaching where you preach the truths of the Bible, but hard preaching is not when you beat up on God's people, where, where somebody needs help, where somebody's wrong on a doctrine or they're wrong on something and then you just beat up on them as though they're like an unbeliever or as though they're an enemy of God. You know, that's, that's one thing that independent Baptist churches are really known for and where people get burnt. Um, and that's something I don't want to be associated with because I don't believe that's the way God wants us to treat our fellow believers in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, what about the pre-tribulation rapture? That's something that you would think of when you go to an independent Baptist church, that the rapture is before the tribulation. Um, and that's not something we believe here. In, in fact, it's so obvious in the Bible that the rapture is after the tribulation. It's hard to think why anyone would believe that. But that's not something we believe. But if we call ourselves a Baptist church, that might be what people think we believe. Um, you know, what about worshipping the false Israel? You know, worshipping uh, the nation of Israel as it exists today. And that's the documentary we're, gonna, we're going to be watching tonight to learn more about that. But these people that you know, which are, they call themselves Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. This is one thing that independent Baptist churches are really well known for. Is that something I want to be associated with when I don't believe that? When I believe it's wrong to worship the unbelieving, uh, Christ-rejecting nation of Israel. Um, a couple of other things. You know, what about altar calls? We don't have altar calls, you know, cursing uh, and blessing for obedience. You know, if you don't tithe, if you don't give 10% of your money, God's going to curse you. You're robbing God. I don't believe that. What about the fact that church is, they believe that church is a formal sit-through presentation and not just this, you know, gathering of God's family here um, like we have today. You know, that's, that's not what we are. People might think that if we call ourselves a Baptist church. 
Uh, what about the fact that they separate off kids? They have kids' church and kids' creche, and they separate everyone into their little Bible study groups. You know, we don't believe that. We believe church is the body of Jesus Christ, and that's why we're together here. That's why we have the children here. You know, I don't mind if babies are crying and babies are walking up and down. Hey, that's a blessing to me that they're here and they're listening to the preaching. They're part of the gathering here. That's great. And you think that they're not paying attention, but you guys that have little kids, you know later on they play church at home. They, they, they copy me or they copy the song leader or whatever because they are soaking in what's going on. Because Simon, you might think he's not soaking in what's going on here. He might be playing around on his chair and whatever. But then later on, he, he's copying exactly what happened in church that morning. So he is. They are soaking things up. And that's why we want them here. We want them to be part of the preaching. We want them to learn. But not only that, we want them to be part of church. I mean, if church is the body, it's the gathering, I don't want to split them off, put them in another room, put them in another building, um, and then take people away. What else? Rules and standards that are preached as commandments. That's something independent Baptists are really famous for. Um, preaching their opinions, preaching things that can't be proven from the Bible, and preaching it as the commandments of God. You know, some people might think you're Baptist Union if you call it a Baptist church. They might think you're part of the union. They might think you're Baptist reformed, that you're you know, a Protestant version of baptism. So you know, there's a couple of reasons why you know, the association isn't always good. So when it comes to association and how people think of the name Baptist, there are pros and cons, aren't there? It can either work in your favor if it's a positive association, or it can work not in your favor if it's a negative association. And there are many reasons why maybe you don't really want to associate with independent Baptist as a whole. But let's just go to uh, Matthew. Matthew 7. Jesus says here in verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, obviously, this verse is talking about salvation. You know, many people believing in the wrong way to salvation. Few people believing in the right way to salvation. So I'm not saying that those that disagree with me are not going to heaven. But the principle is there that the majority is rarely right. The majority is normally wrong. Many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Uh, let's look at another verse here in uh, Exodus 23, verse 2. It says here, one of the commandments, Thou shalt not follow a multitude. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So what is this verse talking about? This verse is saying, you know, don't follow the crowd to do something wrong and don't let the crowd alter righteous judgment, right? Don't, don't judge wrongly because the multitude is making you decline to, to do evil. So what's the principle there? That we don't follow the many. We don't follow the crowd. We don't care what the crowd is doing. That's not going to want to that's not going to change our opinion or how we righteously judge things. So let me ask you, isn't that the problem with naming your church a certain way because of association? Because it's what most people think about the name Baptist? Why would I want to go with what the majority of what people think about something? Because eventually that majority is going to go wrong, aren't they? So that, I'm not saying that that's a, you know, that's, it's a sinful reason to name your church for that reason. But what I'm saying is, that it doesn't seem to be a wise reason to name your church for that reason if you're naming it because of what the majority of people think about something because eventually that majority opinion is going to change. It's going to go astray. And, you know, we shouldn't base any decision in our life based on what people think, right? I mean, if we, if we did things in life because of what people thought or what their impression was, you know, we, we would be long gone from following the Bible, from following the Word of God. So not only do I think it's a bad reason to name your church uh, for that reason, it's just a bad reason to do anything in life. So that's, that's number one reason, the association that people have with the Baptist name or with a certain name that you name a church. 
You know, but what's another reason why people keep the Baptist name in the church, or why they want to call themselves a Baptist church, is they want to name it after John the Baptist, right? So they, will, you know, the reasoning is that John was sent from God, John was called a Baptist, so I'm going to call myself a Baptist. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the reasoning there, that, you know, they say, you know, he was the greatest man that ever lived, and God referred to him as a Baptist. You know, John the Baptist might be the greatest man that ever lived, but he's still a man, isn't he? He's still a man. Um, you know, and the thing is, John was called a Baptist because he baptized people. It wasn't because he was from a Baptist church. He was a Baptist because he baptized people. I think to make the stretch that therefore the first disciples that were baptized by John the Baptist should be called a Baptist church, uh, I think that's stretching uh, God's word a little. But, you know, am I a Baptist? Yes, I am a Baptist because, you know, we baptize people. We believe baptism by immersion. We believe that baptism comes from John the Baptist who was sent by God. But I'm also King James only. I'm also soul winning. I'm also bread breaking. I'm also hymn singing. I'm also independent. So, so why, why just one term and not every other term? Why don't I name my church, you know, independent, soul winning, King James only, and have that as my church name? Well, some people do, you know, and I'm not against that. But for me, you know, why hark on one word and keep that one word in your church name of something you do and not every word? So to me, it's irrelevant. You know, why, why don't I just include all those in my church name? <clears throat> I mean, if you're a Baptist church because you baptize by immersion, then technically, you know, we are a Baptist church. But by that standard, so is a Pentecostal church. Then a Pentecostal church is a Baptist church too, aren't they? because they baptize um, by immersion. But the reason why I wouldn't go with this reason to call your church a Baptist church by John the Baptist is because why name your church after a man? Um, you know, why, 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 if you're going to choose a name to glorify and to lift up, and your reasoning is, is because John was called a Baptist, why would I want to name my church after a man, no matter how great he was? Um, let's look at 1 Corinthians here. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. Because when I think of naming things after a man, this is the scripture that I think of. Verse 10 in 1 Corinthians 1. Now I beseech you, brethren, so I beg of you, I ask you, he's, he's beseeching the Corinthian church here. I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So is he beseeching them by the name of John the Baptist? Is he beseeching them by the name of Paul or by the name of Apollos or by the name of Peter? No, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You just kind of think there, you know, how would God think of us if we have divisions and strife over the name of our church that isn't even the Lord Jesus Christ, it's named after John the Baptist, and he's saying here we want you to have unity and no division in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 11, For it hath been declared unto to me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you, fighting and strife, now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of, I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of John the Baptist, and I of Christ. So that obviously is the right group, right? To be named after Jesus Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any, of, any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Look at this. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So just two things in that scripture passage I want to point out is we see there that it's actually discouraged to name yourself after men. He's saying, like, why are you naming yourself after Paul? Naming yourself after, um, uh, you know, of, uh, of Cephas, of Peter, or of Apollos. You know, shouldn't we just go by the name uh, Jesus Christ, go by the name of Christ? But think about this. 
Paul says here as well that Christ sent him not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So to me, it sounds like preaching the gospel is more important than baptizing, right? Because that, that's what Paul was sent to do. And, you know, it, it was all right for him not to be sent to baptize, but it wasn't okay for him not to preach the gospel. So if I'm going to emphasize something, why wouldn't I emphasize the preaching of the gospel? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be a better name to be Punchbowl Soul Winning Church rather than Punchbowl Baptist Church and, and emphasize the soul winning in our name rather than emphasizing the fact that we baptize, baptize by immersion. Anyway, it's just a couple of thoughts there. But, you know, the reason, so number one, you know, association. Number two, why name your church after a man? You know, we can see that going after men or naming after men is, is discouraged in the Bible. And never do that here. You know, never, never, never go by my name. You know, I don't, I don't think you guys ever will, but... Don't start referring, you know, I don't know if someday somebody will start referring to this group as, you know, the Tayans or the, the Tatians or whatever. You know, maybe, it's, maybe that's why it's good having a last name that doesn't fit with those sort of add-ons because it doesn't sound good. Nobody's going to use it. You know, there was a guy I used to work with in, um, in the restaurant when I used to work in restaurants in Perth and he used to call me Victorino. So maybe, that, maybe that, if we're going to go with the name, let's go with that name, all right? We'll call ourselves the Victorinos. So don't, 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 uh, don't name a church after a man. Don't name anything after a man. Don't do anything because of a man. We should do it um, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. So association is a bad reason to make decisions. Doing something after a man is a bad reason to make decisions. And what's the third reason that they uh, want to keep Baptist in their name or they really uh, feel strong about it? The last one is church history basically traditions of man and you know they'll explain you know i don't know if you've ever read the book the trail of blood but they explain to you you know there was the church that jesus christ started and then that church you know got corrupt you know and and that was the catholic church and then then you go down and then you get the reformers and then you get the protestant church and as far as um, most baptist church churches believe that you know protestant is just half catholic because they reformed some of the things but not everything that's why they still baptize babies that's why they still think uh, that the sunday is the sabbath and they sprinkle and they do all sorts of things they believe in work salvation and a universal church but then they say but then there's this other line right there's this other line of churches that was never part of the catholic church was never part of the protestant movement and this is the baptist line and this is the line that we came down but see, what you miss there in that explanation is they've just assumed that, that that line there has always been called Baptist. Right? They say, this is the Catholic line, this is the Protestant line, and this is the Baptist line. And you just start thinking, well, but who called that line Baptist? I mean, at what point in time was that line referred to as Baptist? Because when you actually read through the history, they were known by many different names. The Mennonites, the Hutterites, the Anabaptists. And then all of a sudden, at, at some arbitrary time, they were referred to as the Baptists. But that's the one we're going to keep. That's the one that's important. They're the Baptists, even though they were known by different names. You know, why, why that name above every other name? Why not the other names? And, you know, we, we are referred to as Christians, aren't we? People call us Christians. And people will say, well, Christian was given by the world. Christian was a name. Just like Baptist was given... It was the name given by the enemies of, of that movement. So was Christian. But, you know, at least Christian is named after Jesus Christ. Whereas Baptist is not named after Jesus Christ. It's named after the man, uh, John the Baptist. So, let's just cover those. So, you know, I'm not going to take any position based on, number one, man's opinion, right? Association. I'm not going to make a decision or take a position based on a man which is what naming a church after John the Baptist would be. And I'm not going to take a position based on man's traditions, which is what this explanation of where our church comes from, and this is why we keep the name, because that's what it's always been called. I'm not going to take a position based on man's traditions either. And I hope you can see that these three reasons are not even good reasons to make any decision in your life, to take any position in your life based on these um, three reasons. So what is the reason why, um, you know, we went with the church in Punchbowl? Well, what is the best reason to do anything in life? 
you need to base it on the Word of God, right? You need to see what the Word of God says, see if there's any example from the Word of God, see if there's any uh, commandment from the Word of God to do a certain thing that you do, and then follow that. And then at least you know you're building your house on a rock and you're building your house on solid ground. Somebody might say, well, Baptist is a Bible word. You know, Baptist does come from the Bible. We see the word Baptist in the Bible. John was a Baptist, it's a Bible word. But so is Pentecost. Pentecost is a Bible word. I'm not going to call my church a Pentecostal church. You know, the word Presbytery is in the Bible. Am I going to call my church a Presbyterian church? Um, so just because a word is, a, is, is in the Bible, that doesn't mean I'm going to use the word to name my church just because it's in the Bible. Um, I need to look to see if there's any patterns in the Bible. And um, let's turn to that. Let's turn to Revelation 2 and see if we can see a pattern in the Bible of how to name or how to refer to churches. Revelation 2, unto the, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden uh, candlesticks. Verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Uh, verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword uh, with two edges. Verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Revelation 3.1. I don't know if you're seeing a pattern here, and I know you probably know where I'm getting at, but verse, Revelation 3.1, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. You know the thought I had when I read that verse? Because, you know, people will say, you know, that wasn't the name of the churches. That was just God. You know, that was just describing the church and where they were. But isn't that what a name is meant to be? Isn't, that an, isn't, isn't a name meant to describe you? So even if it's not the name of the church, we can see here that that's how Jesus referred to them. Because it says here, this is the thought I had, it says that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Because maybe these churches did have names. Right? Maybe, maybe the church in Sardis was called, you know, uh, you know, Living Hope Sardis, Sardis Baptist Church or something. Living Hope Baptist Church. And that's why God is saying, you have a name that you live, but you're dead. Because maybe your name is Living Baptist Church, but I know you're dead. But even though they had a name, he still referred to them as the church in Sardis. Why didn't he refer to them as Sardis Baptist Church? If that's how we're meant to be naming our churches. Verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Anyway, I won't belabor that point. But how many times do you see in the Word of God the church in Thyatira, the church in Sardis, the church of God which is at Corinth, the church in Jerusalem, the church which was at Antioch, the ch the, 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 those are elect with you at the church in Babylon. And you know what's funny? Because you know, preachers go on and on and on about, you know, you know, we got to do things the way the Bible does it. You know, you know, don't follow, you know, don't follow the traditions of man. I'm not going to do what man does. I want to do what the Bible does. You know, you do something that's outside of the Bible and they're like, why are you doing that? Where do you see that in the Bible? And the same people that are going on and on and on like that, they're the same people that have traditions that aren't in the Bible and they go on and on and on about it. So isn't that, isn't that a bit hypocritical there? Uh, you know, and I'm just trying to apply this thinking of doing everything the way the Bible does it in every area of my life, in every area of church. And if there's something that you think we do here that isn't scriptural, then let me know because we've got to change it. We've got to do it the way the Bible says to do it. This is the point I'm at now. This is why we do church the way we do now because this is how I believe church should be done. But if I'm wrong in any, any area, you need to let me know because we need to make sure that we're doing it the way the Bible says it. So, 
you know, it's true, you know, they say your name has to identify you, and I believe our name does identify us, because, you know, what are we? We're a church in the Punchbowl area, so we're called the church in Punchbowl. And you know what's great about God's Word? Is when you're given so many examples of something, you're given clear direction on, on something to do, it makes the decision very easy. Um, when the Bible commands you to do something, you don't have to decide whether or not to do it or not. You know that's the right thing to do. And those of you that know me, I am really bad at making small decisions. You know, when it comes to what projector to buy, you know, how to set up this, how many, what chairs to buy, you know, you know what, what colour of, of a certain thing to buy. You know, I rack my brain over, you know, making the website look just nice, the way I think it should look. Because there's just too many decisions. You know, what font to use, what colours to use, what pictures to use. And it just, oh, I just, I hate making these little decisions. I'm really bad at it. But you know what's funny about the way I am? There are big decisions in life that people take a lot of time to make. And I, I just make those instantly. Who to marry? If I know that's God's will. You know, me and Elizabeth, we got married. I proposed to her in three weeks and we were married in two months. And I didn't see that as a big deal because I know what God's word says about who to marry. So I knew I was making the right decision. You know, where to live. People will think, oh, do I live here? Do I live there? When I was coming back to Australia, it was an easy decision for me where to live. I moved to Sydney because there was a good church there, a good Bible believing, soul winning, King James only church. I didn't even give it a second thought. I just think, you know what? I'm going to find a way to move my family over to Sydney. So there are things like that. It's funny because... When the, when the Word of God has direction, for me, that makes decision-making very simple. Um, but when the, the Word of God doesn't have direction, that's where I struggle a bit. So thank God that with something as trivial, trivial as the name of our church, there is some direction there. So I'm not thinking, oh, did I name it the right way? You know, I named it this Bible word, but now I like this Bible word. Um, and it's constantly changing. You know, thank God that's not going to happen. Now I have a convention in my own heart Hey, that's how God calls churches. That's how I'm going to call the churches <clears throat> that I um, am the bishop of. But somebody might say, well, what if you move suburbs? You know, what if we're not in Punchbowl anymore? What if we move to Auburn? Well, then we'll just change the name. We'll be called the church in Auburn. It doesn't really matter. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to build a brand, guys. We're not trying to build this brand where we're going to get it out and, you know, give out Bibles that have, you know, the church in Punchbowl on it. It's like, oh, man, this book is great. It's branded, church in Punchbowl. Because that really, that's, that's all that the name is when you think about it. You know, you want to promote that name because it's about brand. Not that there's anything wrong with branding. But people want this brand so that they can get it out there, so that they start to know you. And there's nothing wrong. It's probably a, you know, a good idea in terms of marketing. But, you know, that is secondary to me, to um, doing the way I see it in the Word of God. So, you know, if we move suburbs, we'll just change the name. It might be a bit of a hassle. Um, I'm hoping we're not moving anytime soon. So that's one thing to think about for yourself. You know, when you go out and you, and you talk to people, you know, for those of you who are regular members here, you go out, soul winning, and you tell people which church you're from, hopefully that reasoning that I've gone through with you today uh, gives you some confidence when you say you're from the church in Punchbowl. You know why we're called the church in Punchbowl. You're, you're, you're proud, I guess, of going by that name, knowing that that's how God refers to our church. Um, because you don't, want that, you don't want that to sort of stumble you, you know, when you go out soul winning. You know, when somebody asks you what church are you from. You want to be able to explain to them, you know, we're not a denomination. We're independent. You know, we call ourselves the church in Punchbowl because that's what the Bible refers to as churches. And we just wanted a simple name that sounded independent. Let's just go to one more passage, and I'll just end here. <clears throat> Matthew seven twenty four. Therefore, Jesus uh, preaching here, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. 
And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now it's a very familiar parable there of the wise man and the foolish man. The wise man building his house on a rock symbolizing the word of God, symbolizing the word of God that does not change, that is truth. And then the foolish man building his house on sand representing the shifting sands of men, the shifting sands of man's opinion. You know, do I think it's wrong or a sin for a church to have a Bible word name? No, I don't. So, you know, I'm not against, I'm not saying that every church must do what we do, otherwise they're in sin, because we're not commanded to name our church the church in Punchbowl. I mean, we can see how God refers to churches in the Bible as the church in a certain location, and we can use that precedence to say, well, this is why I do it, because that's the example I see in the Bible. But remember, one thing that, uh, you know, my pastor from my old church taught me, you know, a precedence is not a commandment. Just because you see something done in the Bible, that doesn't mean we're commanded to do it that way. I, I do think it's a good reason to do something if you see it done in the Bible that way. So I don't think it's a sin or it's wrong for a church to have a name that's not the church in whatever suburb or city they're in. They're in, at, they're in. But I do think uh, you know, our church name can be backed up by the Bible. Um, but do I think it's wrong for preachers uh, to teach for doctrine the commandments of men? I do think it's wrong. If you insist that Christians keep a tradition of a church name um, that is not commanded in the Word of God, that's exactly what they're doing. They are teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And I am against that. I think that is wrong because we have liberty in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, and I have no doubt that many believers you know, around the world probably have come to the same conclusion I have. They're probably asking the same question, you know, why... Why, does, um, you know, why doesn't any church name themselves how we see it in the Bible? And you know, it's funny because when I tell people what our church name is when we were starting the church, uh, and they said, oh, what are you going to name your church? And I said, well, I'm going to name it the church in Punchbowl. You know the first thing that anyone who's familiar with the Bible says? Ah, church in Punch, church in Sardis, church in Thyatira. So th they, all, they already know as well themselves without even explaining to them, oh, that's how, that's how we see it in the Bible. So it's no surprise to them when I say, well, we called it the church in Punchbowl because they know in the Bible that's how God refers to it. But isn't it funny how that nobody's doing it? This is what I thought was cool about our church name is that it's never been done. Nobody has ever called their church the church in just whatever city they are, even though it's so obvious to anybody that believes the Bible, um, that's what God does. So I have no doubt that a lot of people have come to the same conclusions that I have. You know, are people going to criticize it? You know, they are. You know, are people going to not like it? You know, probably not. Oh, probably yes. You know, are people going to take a while to get used to it? I think so as well. People are going to. I mean, even me. You know, it takes me a while. Even you guys probably. You're probably not even used to saying you go to the church in Punchbowl and, and using that name. But, you know, no man having drunk old wine straightway desireth you. If you remember the first sermon I preached. No man having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. So even though we don't desire the new wine, it doesn't mean that we keep drinking the old wine. But um, I just wanted to end there because, you know, even though people might criticize it, people might not like it, in my own heart, I feel like I at least have a reason for why the church name is what it is and that it's based on the Word of God. You know, the wise man built his house upon the word of God, upon the rock, and the foolish man built his house upon the sand, on man's opinion. And you know, that's what I'm striving to do in every area of life, is build my house upon the rock.